Hey there, today I wanted to show you guys some decks that I feel uh, are a little bit underrated or have gotten forgotten about and um, that kind of deserve some spotlight. And uh, I would like to start with some tarot decks. There are more oracles here than tarot, but um, the first one I want to show is the She-Wolf Tarot. Now I heard that this just got back in stock. Um, this is, I, the, I don't know how many in the edition, I think the second or the third, um, but this is a really, really, really cool, frothy, super feminine deck, which I love, and it has very unusual imagery, but what I, look at that King of Pentacles, but what I love about it is that uh, in the guidebook, uh, Devony Amber Wolf really explains why she chose certain art. Now, if you see cards here that you are that you love, uh, I would like you to uh, look up a flip through of the, the current edition because that one card that's going to sell you on the deck may not be in there anymore, as was the case for me. Um, there were some cards in here that have been omitted from, or have been changed in newer editions but I managed to track down the edition that I wanted. Oh, look at that Knight of Swords with Nuit, the Egyptian goddess of the night. And so this is very thoughtish, very uh, astrology based. Um, it's not just an aesthetic deck, but the way she portrayed the symbolism is really interesting. I made reading the guidebook a very interesting read. So uh, I think Devony Amber Wolf is definitely a, a lovely and wonderful graphic designer. I love this card uh, in the deck as well. Uh, this has been changed in the new edition. Uh, but she's a wonderful graphic designer. I adore her work uh, a lot. And um, I've really, really, really been enjoying reading with this. Like. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I, you know, you'll see me, you know, post once or twice a day. But I, <laughs> I, I can sometimes pull a card multiple times a day, you know. And this is one of those decks that I really enjoy to shuffle. It is a very hyper femme deck. Um, but, you know, I don't mind that. Uh, and I do love all the imagery in here. Um, I also had the Moonchild uh, Tarot, but this one is more my jam. It's a little bit edgier, a little bit thothier, and a little bit more hard hitting. So, um, yeah, I like this one a lot. I feel like this was kind of very much a hype deck way back when it first came out. And after that, I feel like the hype has kind of dwindled. Uh, you know, that was kind of that that surge of Star Child, Moon Child, Work Your Light, uh, that Rebecca Campbell, Daniel Knoll surge. Uh, that kind of sparked that collage deck, Photoshop deck hype. Uh, that kind of, you know, and that kind of dwindled when it, um, when, you know, when that we had all kind of seen and done that. So I wanted to quickly highlight how amazing this Black Panther is that is about to leap into this black hole. And then we have this gorgeous woman up here that's about to leap into the abyss as well. Um, Devani got a lot of feedback on this deck being too body beautiful. Um, she put an ad out at the time of the creation of this deck and um, the only people that wanted to be in the deck were body beautiful people. She has had uh, different body shapes apply uh, to, uh, I can't speak English. Uh -huh. um, she has had different applications from, you know, skinnier people, fatter people, all the people on the whole spectrum, blacker people, lighter people. So the new deck is more body inclusive than this one. Um, but you know that I don't, I, I personally don't see that as something that I, that I look for in a deck, but if that's important for you, just know. Um, so yeah, gorgeous deck. One of my, it's actually becoming one of my 
one of my favorite tarot decks. Uh, also, the back designs change a lot from edition to edition, and this is my favorite out of the bunch. So I really lucked out uh, on being able to snag a pre-owned copy of someone that was... Oh, whoops. Oh, man, I don't want to hit the camera because I don't want to edit. I don't want to spend time editing anymore. Um, but yeah, that was definitely one. The other one that I feel has kind of lost its popularity a bit is The Luminous Void by Laura Zeusman. And I have showed this on my channel before. Uh, it is a really, really weird, dramatic, whimsical deck. Uh, gorgeous matte gold gilding. Gorgeous illustration work. Uh, I think it's really, really, really pretty. I love this Queen of Swords. It's very otherworldly, very watercolory, very messy. Uh, the card shapes are amazing. Uh, it is very Rider Waite Smith, though. So if you know how to read with the Rider Waite, there's not a whole lot of new stuff for you here. Uh, but I do kind of enjoy, I have been enjoying this a lot more lately. I, I use this a lot a couple of years ago. This was my first indie tarot deck that I got. Oh, look at that death card. Um, I used to enjoy it a lot. Um, then I kind of, then I kind of got pushed to the back of my cabinet a little bit. And now I'm enjoying it a lot again because there's something so raw, so primal about this. I think it's really interesting, really interesting depictions, and it's very readable. And once again, back design matters. I love a good back, and this is probably the prettiest card back that I've ever seen. Uh, so yeah, the Luminous Void is still widely available. Now let me try to not, not hit the camera. <laughs> uh, I apologize in advance, guys. Sometimes a deck won't go into the box, right? That can be a little annoying. So those were the two tarot decks that I wanted to show. Um, you know, once again, this one, I feel like a lot of people know of, um, but I don't see it used that much anymore. Uh, the hype has kind of dwindled down, and, uh, you know, the creativity I see in this tarot deck and in this tarot deck it's the kind of creativity that I'm kind of missing from the scene right now, from the indie scene. Uh, so let's move on to Oracle. Um, this right here is a deck I never hear anyone talk about. It comes in this gorgeous cotton bag. Let's see if I can get it out right. I got this as a gift. Um, this is, this was actually the, um, the card the on the back of the of the linen sack. This is the field guide deck. Uh, these cards are really big, really big cards. Um, once again, really gorgeous back design. In my opinion, could have done without the field guide mentioned on every card back. But uh, this is a deck that I normally wouldn't use because it has, um, you know, a really cute, well-made watercolor illustration of a thing that you can find in nature. And then it has the name of the thing and nothing else. Um, but something about it really draws me in a lot. The creator is a doll. Jeez, these cards are so big, I can barely get them to fit on the screen. The card quality is really good. Uh, look at that pig. Um, and the magic is in the little booklet that you get, uh, which is fairly simple to use. So, you know, like I said, normally I'm not one for decks that have, you know, uh, this, this style of working with it where you are dependent on the book, unless it's a little field guide like this. And you can very easily uh, find that pig because it's in alphabetical order and then read the little keywords right here and read the, read the little prose right here. So, you know, like this is literally a little pocket guide and some gorgeous cards with gorgeous symbols. And um, yeah, I adore this. So yeah, the field guide deck definitely deserves a mention. Um, doesn't really seem that popular at all, um, and it's kind of a shame because it's such a cute little set. A really well-produced, really friendly creator whom I admire, who inspires me a lot, and, uh, 
and not that expensive either. So yeah, the field guide deck. Uh, another one is this one, uh, Magic Awaits, a deck for wonder walking. Um, this was kind of difficult for me to get, um, but I did end up getting it. Um, this deck is weird, y'all. Let me put the box out of the frame. Um, this has um, horizontal cards. And these are basically pointers for you to contemplate during walks. But if you don't want to do that, you can use these keywords just fine. It is not for the, <laughs> it's not for the illiterate amongst us. Um, the author, I quickly forgot her name. Um, Amy T. Wan is, uh, um, you know, she likes her words, which is good because I do as well. And, um, you know, if you want to use this deck without the guidebook, which the guidebook is more like a leaflet, very easy to use as well. Uh, you do need to kind of have some sort of a background in tarot card reading, oracle card reading, and, uh, you know, um, you should know some vocabulary outside of the basic healing, abundance, relax, you know, like, uh, you need to kind of be able to be a little bit of a wordsmith yourself. As you can see, the keywords aren't always that easy to read, however, uh, after a while, you um, get really used used to them, and this is definitely one of my favorites. I love the quality of the art, the flowiness, how it can sometimes be very abstract, and how it can sometimes be um, something that's very concrete, uh, very much in the here and now, uh, very much, or sometimes very much dreamscapey, you know, like... But here we have a very concrete one where you have that bird right there or that butterfly. So I do love this deck. And you know, um, there's a lot of people right now on Instagram posting their memes saying, mm, Oracle decks suck. Only tarot cards can tell you what it really, what it's really like. And I'm like, you must never have had a really good quality Oracle deck then because there are definitely some hard hitting concepts in here. And uh, this deck really forces me to look at the world the way a tarot deck never could. So um, it's interesting. Another one that I think kind of gets overlooked um, because it wasn't a Kickstarter. And sometimes we forget how influential Kickstarter campaigns can be as a promotion tool. Uh, this was very quietly released by Maeve. She financed this all by herself. Uh, and um, this is an astrology deck. Uh, which is kind of a mixture of astrology, tarot, major arcana, um, celestial bodies. Um, it's really, really gorgeous. The guidebook is really easy to use. So even for the cards that don't have uh, straight up keywords, um, it, it's a lot of fun. And it's, it's, it's you know, is it um, the definitive astrology deck? No, but is it a very nice, playful, playful, well thought out deck that has a really cool sigilly aesthetic that I really dig. Uh, yes. So, um, yeah, this has all the zodiac signs. It has all the planets. It has lots of um, celestial bodies and it has a sort of archetypal major arcana cards, which I think are really gorgeous. They aren't numbered necessarily, or they aren't mentioned as, hey, this is a major arcana card. Uh, this corresponds with the justice card, uh, or this corresponds with uh, the magician. But you know, if you know, you know. <laughs> so yeah, this is a really cool one. And um, um, this is actually pretty affordable now. When I got it, it was kind of expensive, like $60. This is like, look at those bags. This is like $35 now. Uh, so that's really cool. Let me see if I can. Yeah, you can find you can find them on Instagram right here or on this website. Uh, I'm not gonna put all of that in the box below because I don't have time for that. If you guys like want to write it down, please pause the video. But this is really affordable now. So yeah, I would definitely, if you're into this kind of stuff, try to get my hands on that. 
Um, the other one that I feel doesn't get mentioned that much is this one, the Empty Cup Oracle. Uh, I'm not a Stasia Burrington fan at all. I'm going to be very honest about that. Um, I doubted long and hard if I wanted to get this deck, but I do like it, and I don't use it enough. Um, but these are all very much symbols. They're symbols, everyday life symbols, uh, from nature, from science. Um, some are, some are man-made, some aren't, but these are symbols that really speak to me and it's really easy for me to, to, um, um, use these in a reading and tell a story with them. For example, my favorite card is this one, the pruning shears, because sometimes you have to very delicately use your pruning shears to, to get to the actual core of the matter, you know? So these are all symbols that really speak to me, um, uh, not at all weird or too out there for me to work with. Um, um, it's very grounded, which I like. Uh, and in case uh, that I do need to use the guidebook a little bit, it is very handy and easy to find. You can find things very quickly. Uh, and I like it a lot. Also here, I love the back design. And the next two decks that I'm gonna show you are, all, are kind of similar uh, to this, where it's also very symbol-based. I have kind of found out that I'm not necessarily a I do like it from time to time, but I don't need a ton of decks that are like um, the the soul cards or the that Rainbow Warrior Oracle that I showed earlier, or um, you know that have lots of busy. Um, what's the name of that woman again that does the that does those Oracle decks and the tarot tarot decks like Devas of Creation, the Book of the Dead. The Shimmering Veil Tarot, I forgot her name. I do love her work, but those are not necessarily decks that I like to work with. I need, I'm need. i more of a, when I do read intuitively, uh, when or more intuitively, because I feel like I still draw off of knowledge in my head. Uh, what makes me tick is symbol, symbols, symbolism. So, uh, and thinking about symbolism. And that's where um, this little baby comes in the extraordinary oracle really cute deck produced in very small quantities horrible atrocious cardstock um cute little book uh cardstock is really bad you can re definitely tell that these were almost like cut by hand super thin and floppy um but a really interesting texture nonetheless and they do hold up but this is not a very great cardstock. Uh, this is the third edition, I think, judging from the backs. And I use this a lot. And these are very much, very much, you know, you very usable symbols, like half-ass TV dinner. Like, whenever I pull this one, it's like, stop eating fucking junk, start taking care of yourself. So very clear guidance, you know? That umbrella, oh. You know, it's very easy for me to take any one of these symbols and construct a reading or a story with with them. I feel like the quality of the illustrations in the decks these women make is really good, really cute. Um, it really speaks to me. It's really, really adorable. What's that? Oh, that one sock that's always left alone. How sad is that? <sighs> The purse, that fucking bag with a lot of shit in it. Like, you know, this is very, you know, mundane. Magic in the mundane. That's what this deck is all about, you know? Because there is lots of magic in the mundane. So, yeah, you get this this deck, and then you get this cute elastic band. This reminds me of Melissa Sanova. She, ha she has decks with elastic bands on them. Um... You know, that, and then you get that cute little guidebook that has extra explanations, has some cute spreads. Um, this is one that I barely see anyone use ever, and it's a shame because it's it's a really well-constructed little deck. You get this cute linen pouch that is hand-stamped by the ladies who own the brand. And they also have this one, the Neon Visions, which is a little bit more... Um, which is a little bit newer. It's on slightly better cardstock, which I highly appreciate. 
and it's kind of a similar affair. Yeah, this card, this is, it seems like this is actual cardstock. Uh, some lint off the bag, but hey, whatever. Uh, this is very similar to the other one, but this is less mundane, more magic and witchy, but also lots of symbols. I read so well with these. And, um, you know, uh, this is really amazing. It's gorgeous. The Neon Visions Oracle. Um, I love these illustrations. I think this is a dope as hell deck. Here, Sacred Anointing Oil, because you got to... You gotta make sure that you anoint your shit, bitch, before you, before you invite all these other energies in, you know? Like, that's how I read with these. You know, over here, these, these charms and symbols, you know? Protect yourself because a storm is coming and you need to calm your tits, maybe drink some chamomile tea, you know? These decks kind of make me swear a lot as well. <laughs> oh yeah, we have the, uh, the right hand and then the left hand. So those kind of denote the right hand path and the left hand path. So, you know, if I were to pull, no, that's not the left hand. But anyways, there are two distinct hand cards. So this would be the right hand path. So if I were to pull this in a reading, I'd say, you know, stay in your lane, stay on your path, be nice, be a good girl. If I were to pull the left hand path one, look, familiar. If I were, to, look, tarot cards. If I were to pull the left hand path one, where is it? I'd be like, ooh, it's time to get naughty, you know? Um, but this is like more of where this, is, but where this one was the, um, the more magic in the mundane version. Uh, of the deck, you know, the first one they did. This is definitely, the Neon Visions is definitely the uh, the mundane in the magic version. So these make a really cute little pair. I've been rambling for way too long, but I just wanted to show you guys some cool decks that I feel like are being forgotten, are overlooked, that have some really good qualities. And uh, thank you all for watching and bye bye.